Hi everybody, it's Mike Pingle, and welcome to the Mike Pingle Show! Yay! It's Thursday. Here's Is it Thursday? Oh god, everything's running together right it's now. Thursday. <laughs> it's Thursday. In my mind, it's Thursday. Yeah, well, I just, uh, we've been so busy recently that, like, every day kind of feels the same for me. I wake up every morning, <laughs> tons of things to do, and I, go, I get home at night. Because <laughs> you're very popular, he has lots of things to do. He's producing and acting in a new show. By the way, everybody, this is Adam. Svi Ziv. Ziv. Adam you Ziv. knew I was going to mess it up. You know, I, I knew I was going to do that. That's totally fine. Totally totally I've heard every pronunciation in the book. <laughs> Let me read a little I'm going to read a little bit about you to um, the people watching. Please. Uh, he's an actor, dancer, musician from New York. Wow. Yep. Uh, he was graduated from Princeton University. He has studied acting at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts in London, American Global Theater, and Stella Adler Studio in New York City. He has appeared... It sounds so weird because I'm talking about you. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know how else to do it. like, yeah, that's great, that's great. Uh, he has appeared in many lead roles in a New York theater, including off-Broadway. Yep. Mm -hmm. Instead of on-Broadway. That's so weird. I don't know what, how that works. <laughs> and he moved to Los Angeles in 2014. That's right. His upcoming production of Christopher Durang, Laughing Wild at Los Angeles Theater Center, will mark his production... Productional? Pro Producerial. 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 <laughs> Lord, I'm never getting picked up for National Army. Uh, <laughs> debut. The show opens on June 7th, 8th, 9th. Tickets are on sale at laughingwildonstage.com. That's right. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Thank you. I'm Welcome. Excited. I'm excited to be here. Yes. Welcome to the Oprah Mike Pingle Show. No, I, I love I love both Oprah and Mike Pingle. So. <laughs> both well for both of us. I have seen you dance. Yes. Yeah. And you right. are an amazing dancer. Thank you so much. And uh, if you're a as an amazing actor, as you're an amazing dancer, the show's gonna be fantastic. Thank you so much for But I'm sure you are. <laughs> no, thank you for Was that underhanded? I don't know. No, no, sure. I took it as a compliment. Thank you. <laughs> because I saw you dance at what was uh, that was uh, Chad Michaels' event. Yeah, it was the West Hollywood Dance Festival last year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Had no idea that you were a dancer. You walked out, you slayed it. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was amazing. I was like, what? How do you do that with your, what? you doing what with your body? <laughs> I mean, I don't even think I could do half the stuff you did when I was in 20s. So you were amazing. Well, you know, actually, I started late. Um, and I find that uh, dance is like anything. If you put in the work, you, you, can, you can get there. I mean, certain people yeah. are born with certain things, you know what I mean? Like my friend Sarah was born with completely 180 turnout and like full splits on either side. Oh my god. So you know, you've got an advantage yeah. if you've got that going for you. But you, I, I think, I really believe that anybody can learn anything. If you, if you put in the work. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm my six pack, because I'm at the gym every day putting in the work. <laughs> <laughs> not happening, not happening, not happening. Yeah. Uh, my first question, tell me about what brought you not only to acting and producing the upcoming show. Oh, okay, yeah, great. Um, so I started acting really, really young. Um, I was probably about eight or nine when I was in my first play. Um, and uh, I just kind of fell in love with it immediately. I did it every year that I could. And then um, what's been really funny for me my entire career, basically, and, and if you count eight years old as, <laughs> as your career. Yes, yes, yes. I tend to take breaks from acting every few years or so. I, I don't know why something hits me every few years and I need to step away for a little while. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I took a break when I was like 12, 13, didn't touch it again for like three years, and then when I was like 22 I took another break, and, and recently I took another break as well, but I really want to get back into it just because that is kind of where my original strengths lie. Yeah. Um, and this play in particular is just, is just my absolute, absolute favorite show. I came across the script in college, in acting class actually. Um, it was my sophomore year, I was in um, an advanced acting class with actually my co-star Dominique was in that class as well. Wow. Um, and uh, this this uh, girl, well, woman now, but, you know, we were like 20. Uh, so one of the girls in my class brought in this speech that was just the funniest thing I'd ever heard. And the, the voice behind it was just so frustrated and angry in a funny way, you know what I mean? Kind yeah. of like Jon Stewart on The Daily Show, you know what I mean? Like, I'm so right about this, why don't you agree with me, you know what I mean? Uh, and I went up to her as soon as she was done with the speech and I asked her where it was from. And she told me it was from Christopher Durang's Laughing Wild. And our friend Rob, who was also in the class, mentioned, he was like, oh, I'm actually doing that show for my thesis this spring. He was, he was a senior. And my first thing, the first thing I asked him was like, Rob, can I audition, please? I've never been so drawn to a script as, as ever with the, yeah. when, than, than with this one. And he tells me, well, I'd love to, but it's a two-person show, I'm in it, and my friend Irene's in it. So, <laughs> so no, you can't audition. <laughs> yeah, the show has two people. It has a man and a woman, and that's what right. they're called, man, woman. That's right, the man and the woman, yeah. And uh, so he's like, no, you can't audition and I was like 
damn it. So I went and saw it. Um, I, you know, I read the whole thing that day. Yeah. Um, and then I went and saw it in the spring, and I just fell in love with it even more. It's um, it's such a unique show. It's a uh, so it's, it's divided into three sections. It's uh, uh, Act one is a solo piece from the woman, takes about half an hour. Um, and then the second act is a solo piece from the man, which takes about 35 minutes. And then the final act is when we kind of start appearing in each other's dreams and start interacting and everything. Um, it's, uh, it's really, uh, it's a huge test of uh, stamina. Because um, you're addressing the audience directly for like 30, 35 mm. minutes on your own. So it's a beast to memorize. And, um, and it's, you know, you got to really feel okay telling a story yeah. and that's that's what I think that's what draws us all to theater and movies and, and films uh, and TV especially these days is um, a good story yeah. and, and this one has it's kind of hard to pin down but this one really does take you on a journey nice mm -hmm. nice uh, now you crowd you're crowdfunding for this show that's right yeah how's that going and where can people help out yes please um, we we started a GoFundMe campaign about three weeks ago um, we have a seven thousand dollar goal um, of which we uh, as of yesterday we've reached about thirty six hundred that's good so that's yeah good. We're, do, we're doing not we're, we're, we're doing pretty well um, we've got two weeks left into the show um, and you know we have also got some private donors and I'm also counting on you know to pay for the show I'm also counting on some ticket sales so the best way you can help out the show there is to go. come see it <laughs> and uh, what's, what's the dot com again? oh the GoFundMe you can reach us at gofundme.com slash laughing wild on stage there's uh, there's links to everything on our website there's a trailer uh, link to the GoFundMe tickets everything one stop shop at the website yeah. there mm -hmm. you go there you go mm -hmm. uh, what's most challenging for you in the role as man <laughs> Um, God, that's a tough one. Um, honestly, at this point, it's, um, I think it's keeping up with my scene partner. <laughs> oh my God. Because <laughs> uh, I've had this script for a very long time, so I, I, I know my yeah, soul. since you were eight, right? <laughs> Four? I'm not sure. no. no, I've had this script for about, um, God, like 11 years, or maybe 12 years or something like yeah. that. Um, so I know, I know my piece very well, and I've been, we've been developing this show for about, um, since October. Um, and uh, my director and I have been workshopping my part for some time so I feel quite solid in my in my solo piece at the moment yeah. um, but my co-star Dominique is just absolutely exploding with energy in all her scenes and uh, and I want to keep up with her <laughs> so that's my biggest challenge right now but no I guess uh, in all seriousness it's um, it's just staying in it because um, when you uh, it's so easy to feel over rehearsed, you know what I mean? That's true. Um, to go through the motions, especially and when you don't have an audience yet, you don't know what's doing, exactly. what's going on, what's going to hit, what's going to be good. Exactly. It's not, you're just trying to do what the director says. Yeah, and, and I'm trying to keep it fresh and, and, and really tell the story because I feel like that's when actors get lost is when they, yeah. they start performing too much and forget that there's actual com com um, information to communicate. Yeah. So. and then it all changes when there's an audience in front of you. It's like claps, laughs, cries. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, hopefully all of that. <laughs> <laughs> What's that line from Beckett? I sense this very disturbed presence behind me. But it fills one with a sad the longing. The glass is not half empty. My it's mental half history full. is something. Is feeling All anxious right. just part of the human condition? I don't know the answer to that question. I don't want to take away faith in God. From I went there because I didn't it. know what else to do with my life. That was one cheery option. I thought my head would explode. Because I'm really Why don't tired you get your tooth of where fixed? I've been. It's just so When is it unfair. my turn? What works? Laughing wild think? amid a severest Why woe. did she do that? What's that line wild. from Beckett? It doesn't seem I'm very I'm laughing wild. wild. I'm, I'm laughing, laughing wild. wild. It's just too difficult to be alive, isn't it? Um, let me let me read my wonderful um, questions I had. Uh, when did you know performing would be your passion and career in life? Um, that's a... Okay, um, so I started, uh, I started the performing arts when I was five. So I've been on stage for 25 years. Um, wow. So I'm, uh, this is, it's kind of always been my, I don't want to say identity, but it, it, like a huge part of who I am is my relationship to the arts. Um, when did I know I wanted to go pro? I guess, I think I was about 16 or 17. Um, and I, ta I told my parents. <laughs> And you can imagine how that went. Uh, oh, we all do. <laughs> but they actually, for 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 um, the for parents of uh, future 
artist, they came around really fast, actually. Um, I've heard stories of people, of people's folks just not supporting it at all, and, and um, of course they weren't super thrilled to hear that that's what I wanted to do. But they came around really, really fast, and my mom is my biggest fan in the world. Um, in 25 years of performing, um, literally hundreds of performances, I think my mom has missed like maybe three or four wow, or something like that. Right. Yeah, she's my biggest supporter. Um, but yeah, I think I knew I wanted to go pro around 15 or 16. Nice, yeah. nice. Mm -hmm. um, all right, I have to ask this one. Uh, mm -hmm. I've, I've seen you that you might have done some cosplay modeling. <laughs> Insert photo here. I sure have. <laughs> um, are you into cosplay? Uh, why do I, f I feel like I'm a little pedophile or something going, do you uh, enjoy cosplay and what's your favorite character? Because <laughs> it's, it's, well, I, you've just seen it. You've seen, I just threw up the photos. Oh, did you? Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, editing, editing. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> my other talent. Gotcha, gotcha. Cut for me, cut to you. Cosplay. Yeah. Do you do a lot of modeling? I, I, I've... Uh, no, not really, actually. Um, and how did that come about? Well, my friend Chris Riley, um, you can follow him at CapLucky on uh, on Instagram. He's a good friend of mine. Um, you can watch his other. He was here. He, oh, was he really? Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. So Chris, um, Chris and I were introduced by my old roommate, um, and he asked me. Um, he just actually one day he asked me, um, "Would you be down to come do a pinup shoot at my uh, um, for for my Instagram?" And I said, um, "Well." I don't know. <laughs> that sounds creepy. Um, that sounds a little weird. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I'm not really sure. Um, uh, what is that going to be like? Come to my room with little stuffed animals everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so he told me basically because he he loves um, comic books and cosplay and all that, and uh, it's actually taken off now um, that Instagram account. But um, he asked me, would you come and you know take some sexy photos as comic book characters? And I thought, you only live once. Why the hell That's not? That's right. That sounds like fun. <laughs> and I've got these great photos because of Chris. So, um, yeah, I was actually the first model for um, for, for that whole yeah, series. You did Pokemon, I know. I did a Pokemon thing. I did an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. look. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's um, right. I did, um, oh, I did a, the most recent one I did was a, um, oh, help me out here, Blade Runner. did Blade Runner oh, shoot. Oh, okay. I didn't see Which was one. really fun. Um, yeah, last, when he was on the show, one of your pictures were up in the back. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just, yeah. you know, because... Talk amongst yourself. <laughs> um, getting away from that. Yeah, yeah. Getting back to the real important questions. Dancing or acting, which gives you more butterflies in your stomach? Oh, that's um, to watch or to do? To do. To do? Oh, I can't choose. It's equal for me. It's totally equal. They give me they they, they did they give me totally different things, um, but they, they mean the same to me. They're uh, yeah. Oh. Everything's fine. Everything's I didn't fine. do that. It wasn't me. <laughs> They're working on the pool at my studio. So. <laughs> yeah, it's just down the. It's actually in the living room. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's in living room pool. It's amazing. No, no. We're on location in Burbank. I don't know where you are. Um, who was your. Who are. Or who were or are your mentors? My biggest mentors. Um, I'd have to give. Um, I'd have to give the first one to my piano teacher of 25 years, uh, Ming Fong. Uh, she taught me from, I mean, she taught me my first scale, she taught me my first Beethoven sonata, she taught me she, everything from, from day one till today, she's still my teacher, and, and if there's one thing she taught me, it is uh, work ethic, and um, uh, she, she was, uh, she, uh, when I would get notes wrong, she'd slap my elbow, or, um, you know, this was the 90s back, <laughs> by the way, this was passable back then, the modern mm -hmm. parents I don't think would, would fly for this kind of thing, but, you know, she was, uh, and she, and if I didn't do the work, she let me know I hadn't done the work. Yeah. You know, she kept me honest. Um, so, in terms of my work ethic, I'd have to give it to Ming Fung. And um, another big mentor of mine, uh, huge, was uh, the late uh, Tim Vassen. He was um, a teacher of mine at, at school. He was actually um, a teacher for me and most of my team. Uh, so Lovell, my director, and Dominique, my co-star, we all met in college. And so we all studied with uh, Tim, and uh, he died a couple years ago. And Tim, in a similar way to Ming Fung, uh, where Ming Fung didn't stand for my art bullshit, Tim didn't stand for my person bullshit. And, uh, <laughs> and he really, um, he taught me what was what, and he, uh, and he really held me to a high standard of not just performing, but also uh, how to be. And um, he really mellowed me out and, and, and helped me kind of see that the world wasn't as 
doesn't need to be as complicated as you want it to be. Um, he was an amazing guy and a great director, um, and uh, yeah, we were we were just um, actually the the show is dedicated to his memory because he was a huge huge influence on me, and I, and I know both Dominique and Lovell. So um, I'd, if, I, I'd, if I had to give it to two people, I'd say my piano teacher Ming Fung, uh, Tim Vassen, and of course my uh, my mother. Um, she oh. um, yeah she was um, she helped she coached me she yeah. studied piano when she was a kid so she wasn't my teacher but she did help me a lot so she was by my literally by my side um, wow. uh, for my entire childhood yeah mm -hmm. and if you want to see Adam's piano playing I, you post some on your uh, Facebook yeah I have a couple of videos on my Facebook and my uh, Instagram oh, at okay. Zivkoface Z I V K O F A C E is my Instagram yeah. so you can check that out yeah. You're very good. Thank you. <laughs> I would have him perform, but my piano's out for being tuned. And it's so. being repaired with the pool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what it was, it dropped. It dropped. <laughs> uh, what is your favorite dance you've ever performed? Oh, my favorite dance I've ever performed. Um, I'd have to give it to... Um, I was with a, a dance company called Rhetorical Dance Company for about a year and a half, and I performed a piece with them called The Dancing Man, choreographed by Nate Hodges. Um, and that was um, a singular challenge. It was so hard, <laughs> but it was the lead. I was in the lead role, which was awesome. It was a 14-minute piece and like six different sections, each each one more difficult than the last. Um, but it was it was just magic. And and the the the, the cast of dancers I was with were just brilliant. Um, it was and the, the music was so cool. It was like uh, Scottish bagpipes, mm -hmm. um, uh, but and drums. It was so unusual and so challenging and and just so much fun to do. Um, I wish I could have done it more, um, uh, but it was kind of a one, uh, I think we had a couple performances, but it was a one weekend uh, sort of gig. And that's so hard for dance because a lot of things, the gigs are only like one week and yeah. you do all this work mm -hmm. and you do it with one or two performances. Yeah. It's yeah. I mean, it's, it's like um, it, it's uh, yeah. It's a little frustrating, but you know, it's also kind of what makes what I do so exciting is that yeah. um, there's only these chances. You know what I mean. So it makes yeah. it really special for me because you know you do all this work and then you get these moments where you're like, okay, now's where you share. And it also makes it special for other people too. You know, because you can't just see it whenever. You know, it's not like. Um, you know, a rerun of Friends that you can play at any time, you know what I mean? It's like, don't get me wrong, favorite show, favorite show. Oh, really? Yeah, I love that mine's show. Mine's not, mine's not. It you, doesn't, know, you know what mine's is. It doesn't age so well, honestly, the, the homophobia and the sexism on that show. <laughs> I never liked the show when it was out. And really? Then, like, and then I sit there and I see reruns, and uh -huh. sometimes I watch it, and I'm like, I've seen this episode. I see the same three episodes all the time in reruns. Like, yeah, I, mean, I think got, they only did three of them. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, you got to put it in context, but I still love it. Um, yeah, that's kind of what makes it so special is um, you have you have the shots that you have and it also allows you to move on to a new project next yeah. you know um, I was uh, there was one gig I did that was I really got to do for a long time and that was awesome it was actually one of my dream another one of my dream shows West Side Story which I did last oh, wow. year um, and I got to do that for uh, for quite some time which was great um, but yeah you move on and you know I personally I really admire actors who stay on the same gig for such a long time like yeah. I mean I, I can't imagine um, you know I could probably do Laughing Wild for Ten years, but you know, <laughs> well, all these actors who are on shows for like ten years—I don't know how they—they they don't get tired of it. But um, yeah, it's called a paycheck. It's called a paycheck. I <laughs> knew uh, if I was on a show for five years, I'd be very happy. I'd be very happy. Um, do 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 do. What is your favorite moment in Laughing Wild? Oh, my favorite moment. Okay, um, Lovell, that's my director. I'm sorry if I'm giving anything away right now because we've been really careful about not giving away too many plot points. Oh. Um, but I have one bit in, okay, I can say it this way. I have one bit in my solo piece um, where I play two characters at the same time. And so I have to talk, uh, we use the switching language of me kind of talking here, then talking there, talk, just kind of ang angling my body and face to make it seem as if two people are there and changing my voice. Um, so that's probably my favorite bit in the show. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really tough. I practice that particular bit every single day just because the, the switches are so fast and, and it's the only way to sell it uh, is to go yeah. here, 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 here. And um, it's, it's so much fun and it's totally wild. And um, oh, it's totally wild. Um, <laughs> Who knew? Yeah. Laughing. Right? <laughs> um, but yeah, that one's really, really fun. And I, I think it's going to be a really fun moment for the audience, too. I, I won't give away more than that, but uh, yeah, it's, um, it's really, really fun. 
And then there's a bit in Act 3 with my co-star where we appear, uh, we suddenly become characters on a talk show for about oh, wow. three or four minutes. Uh, and I won't give away too much about that either, but that talk show bit with Dominique is so much fun to do. She's just Aww. so, she's, I actually, I, I hope I'm not, Dom, if I, if I keep distracting you in rehearsal by laughing every time you say something, I'm sorry, but I can't help it. Um, she's just really fantastic. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Tell everybody where they can get tickets, um, when the show is, yeah. where they can find you. Um, go. Do it. Do it. <laughs> they want to so, know. It's uh, Christopher Durang's Laughing Wild at the Los Angeles Theater Center downtown. There is tons of parking. One of the reasons we chose the theater. Um, you can get tickets. Everything is on the website. Uh, laughingwildonstage.com. Um, visit our GoFundMe if you believe in our project. Oh, just one more thing is uh, we are, um, this is a, pro I'm paying everybody. Everybody, no, I've been asked to be. Pay me? <laughs> well, the project. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I've been asked to work for free more times than I can count um, in my career. And I'm dedicated to not doing that for my team. So if you come to our show, if you support our show, your money would be going directly to creating jobs for local artists who have a hard time finding work sometimes. Um, so yeah, everything's on the website, Laughing Wild on stage.